Hey everyone, in today's DMZ video, I'll walk you through how to solo all of the Heated Madness weapon parts in Kosha Complex. The Heated Madness weapon is a unique cast off 762 blueprint that has a wonderful bright orange look to it. And I'm gonna walk you through step by step on how to get all of the parts. And in this particular video, I've got all five weapon parts in a single solo deployment. So this can be done all at once if you want to, but you can also obviously go in in multiple deployments. One of the most challenging aspects of Kosha Complex is its maze-like layout. So until you get everything memorized, I suggest you use a map. And I'm gonna have a link in the description below to this map, which is my personal favorite. And I'll be referencing this throughout the video as well. First, let's talk about what I recommend you have prior to entering the complex. We'll start with the comms vest. Having a comms vest is clutch, especially when running solo, so you can be aware if there are any other squads on the map with you. I find that if you're looking for a greater chance of the map having no other squads, I recommend playing in the mornings. More often than not, when I play between like 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern, I virtually never run into any other squads. But on the flip side, when queuing at night, it's the opposite. I am getting squads in every single deployment. So try to queue up in the morning if you're looking for less hostility. Next up, you want to make sure that you have a car battery and jumper cables so that you can access the server area, which has two of the blueprint items that we need. These can be found at gas stations quite easily, so make sure you check these as you make your way towards the entrance. Next up is the rebreather. Now, a rebreather can be found in medical bins, but can also be bartered for with an imported tea and hard drive. So these are also very common items at the gas stations as well, so you can grab that tea and hard drive and grab a rebreather before you hop in as well. The rebreather is not necessarily required to get one of the weapon parts depending on which spawn you get, but I would just grab one anyway considering how easy they are to acquire. Next, I would grab two radiation blockers. The radiation blockers will be needed to get one of the weapon parts, and these work far better than gas masks in here. Also, the gas hits really, really hard, so those masks are breaking quickly. It's much better to have radiation blockers, and I recommend having two. It's only going to make your life easier when you get in there, and you'll see why in a moment. Okay, our shopping list is almost done, but two more mentions. One, I do like the SZ Holotherm scope on my gun, just because of the general darkness of the area, so consider adding that before you go in. Also, having a skeleton key or the L2 access key, which is going to give you a quick and safer exfil if you're on a time crunch at the end of your raid and you have all five of those items and you want to make sure that you get out. Not required, of course, but handy for sure. There are some other items that we're going to be looking for when we get in there, and I'll touch on those in a moment. Let's talk about which entrance to go in. I find that the North Turok entrance is by far the easiest and quickest to get to the center of the map, and it also happens to be a location of one of the blueprints that we need as well. Now, as we're entering our starting area, let's talk about a very important item you need to start looking for right away, and that is the AQ laptop. The AQ laptops are scattered around all the starting areas as well as the main areas of the map, and we need three of them to grab the final weapon blueprint. They are always loose loot, so keep that in mind. You do not need to loot objects to find these, just loose loot, so keep moving through the areas and be on the lookout for them. The next item we are looking for right away is the night vision goggles, and these can be found in the starting areas as well, and they also drop off dead AI. These are extremely handy in the main middle area of the Kosha complex because it is very dark and highly dangerous. And you know what else is dark and dangerous? Cybercrime. The FBI has reported over $10 billion was lost to digital crime in 2022 alone. That's billion with a B. That's double what it was just two years ago. Nowadays, everything we do is online, making us vulnerable to fraud and online threats. It's time to secure your digital life with today's sponsor, Aura, a smart and simple online safety tool to protect your entire family. Aura provides an all-in-one protection that includes antivirus, credit monitoring, secure VPN, parental controls, identity protection, and more. Sign up for a free 14-day trial today at Aura.com slash Fixate and start being proactive about protecting your family, assets, and identity across all of your devices. Okay, we are back on the Heated Madness Guide and we are still inside of the water area underneath the Tarak Bridge. And we've come up to an area that has the green lasers. And once we clear the AI here, we are going to work our way towards the right. And there will be a small wall that you can destroy with a Semtex or a lethal. And you're gonna go through that wall and it's gonna be the first spot that we find a blueprint for Heated Madness. This will be the optic. We go through the wall and this is where the rebreather comes in handy. It is not required, but it is a tight squeeze without it. So I do recommend having it, like I said earlier. But we're gonna go down in here 
And first we're gonna check the left side, which I see it there a lot. And in this particular case, it is not here. We are gonna check it. We go over here, we follow this red arrow, open the door, and sometimes it's in the corner on the right, right where I looked, it's not there. So I continue looking around and I'm gonna see it in another room here in a moment. And in particular, it's all the way at the back through this broken wall and in another back room in a door. So again, if the rebreather wasn't in my hands right now, we'd be in a bit of trouble. So definitely grab that rebreather. Trust me, it's gonna make all the difference in the world. Once we have it, we just work our way back outside and up through the same way we came in. And we're gonna finish clearing the underwater area until we get to the final hatch door to enter the main area of the map. Okay, so we've made it to the hatch door. We've got it opening and we're about to head into the main center area. This is the area that is extremely dark and the area in which you would be using night vision. Make sure that you have found it by now. And if not, you can always pick up like a mini Bach or one of their shotguns and there will be a light on the end of it. And that will do for now. Um, but you really do want to have a night vision for this area. It's going to make life a lot easier. The tier three AI in here do hit pretty hard and they are pretty sneaky. So we're going to run into the center and we are going to be looking for the next weapon piece. And the first spot that we're going to look is the five vent ducts. And this is like what I call a vent duct. It's underneath and you crouch into it. It is not in this particular one. There are five of these scattered around the center area and the weapon part can be inside any of those five but it can also be loose loot around as well you're going to see like an area with some rocks that are broken down you'll also see an area that has some wooden boxes and this is also an area that can have it loose loot as well remember all these weapon parts are loose loot and you're just going to keep looking around until you find it now another very very important moment while you're in this center area is you have to loot the rad detector and the rad detector is absolutely required for the fourth weapon part so it is located inside one of the offices so the offices are in the middle area near these ducts you can't miss them it's the only place with doors you go into one of the doors and the rad detector is a guaranteed drop on the desk so make sure you're grabbing that do not forget this now once we've collected the second weapon blueprint the barrel for the heat of madness gun we have to continue to remember that we need three aq laptops and in this particular run we have not found a single one we could have found two by now even perhaps in our starting area but we didn't so what you see me doing here is going into a1 and this is the starting zone for rohan oil tunnel entrance and what we're going to do is is we're going to hit all of these starting areas until we find the three aq laptops because they are required for the fifth and final weapon blueprint and this particular one we're coming in from the inside we don't need any keys or anything we open the door from the inside no problem we go in and we look around for the laptops again the laptops are always loose loot and you can find them inside some of these blue doors that you're going to see they're going to see a lot of blue doors and you're going to go into the all these little side blue doors and look for your laptops but do not forget about them and go through all of these starting areas until you find all three of them and by the way, there is way more than three of these laptops scattered around. So next we wanna go into the area that is the Oasis entrance and the radioactive entrance, the one that we are going to use our radiation blockers for. And this particular entrance coming in from the backside is super easy to get the blueprint item that we're looking for. Also a couple blue doors that could have AQ laptops in this particular run, I find two in here. So. Obviously you can hit this first and then if you're missing one, you can go to A1 or B2, the other missing area that we haven't gone to that's a starting zone. So you can go back and check those starting zones after you've hit the radioactive area because it can have those AQ laptops that you're looking for. We're gonna walk up to the main entrance here. We're gonna unlock the deadbolt. Watch out for the new AI that is a charger that explodes and you're going to pop those radiation blockers and you're gonna get in there. And the weapon blueprint is going to be in the very first room that we open. There are four doors. There's going to be two on the right and two on the left. And it's going to be in one of those four. I've never seen it anywhere other than those four. Now, keep in mind that when you open these doors, it will relock the door that we just came in. It's part of a feature of the, of the zone. You have to close them all to open the door again. So in this case, I'm going to run around and look for the weapon blueprint and I think it is behind one of these closed doors. And when I open that closed door, it locks the way that I came in. So you have to use the circular dial 
uh, door handle to reclose it after you've gone in. So we're opening this bunker door in this manner, and then we're gonna have to reclose it to gain access back to the way that we came. And once you find the heated madness magazine, you can just dip out, close those doors, and re-go out the way that we just came in and get back into the center of the map, which leaves us only with two more blueprints to find. And both of those blueprints are gonna be in the same exact area, the server room. And yes, you will have to have all three of your AQ laptops by now. So if you haven't found them, continue to search for those starting areas until you do, and then we'll be ready to go for the server room. Okay, once we're ready to go in to the C1 or C2 door, it doesn't matter which one you go into, you do have to use the car battery and the jumper cables between the two outer doors. You're gonna put them into like a circuit breaker box. And once those two items are in, you can then now have power to both doors and you can go in whichever door you want. Once you go in, we're going to work our way to the right hand side of the room or technically the south end if you're looking at the map that I've provided. Once we get to the south end of the room, we are going to see a door and that door is locked and has a keypad on it. And we are going to use our rad detector above the keypad to see what letters we're going to be looking for. We need to commit these three letters to memory because each of these three letters is going to signify a corresponding number. And we need to go figure out what those numbers are gonna be. And we are going to use the rad detector on the blackboards. So scattered throughout this big old room, there are seven blackboards. And each blackboard has a potential to show one of these symbols and a number associated with it. So once we figure out the three letters that we're looking for, we're going to start hitting the blackboards one by one. And each blackboard is a little tricky to keep a real close look at each blackboard. Sometimes they will be duds and have actual zero letters and number correspondence on them. And sometimes they'll have the wrong letter with the, with a number, but there are all the numbers available to look at. And quite frankly, you only need two. And then you can just use trial and error to figure out the third number. And once you've got two or all three of the numbers, you're just gonna go up to the pad and type in the number and it's going to open the door and it's a tiny room inside. And inside you're gonna find the heated madness muzzle, which leads us to the final weapon part. And that is in the same room. We are going to jump up onto the top in the middle of this main server area. And we're gonna find these circular server kind of racks. And we're gonna look for the little wire coming out of the bottom and that is gonna prompt an ability for us to connect the AQ laptop. And you're gonna have that little prompt, you're gonna connect the AQ laptop, and you're gonna have three separate ones to do. You have the two right there, and then near the end of the room on the north side, you're going to have the final one. Once you've connected the third and final AQ laptop, it is going to open a door on the north side, right where we are. And through this door is the last weapon blueprint. And it's up here on the left, just to the left of the L2 exit that we're going to take here in a moment, because we did bring our L2 access card. And you can bring a skeleton key for this as well. Again, not required. In this particular case, we still had five minutes remaining. But you never know. You might be in a time crunch. Having that L2 access card is going to make exiting very easy once we've completed everything. But here we are. We're going to go up and to the left. And this is just a basic mantle here, nothing fancy. We go up here, this is the door that has been unlocked after the three AQ laptops have been put in. And you're gonna find the final weapon piece in here. And there it is, the heated madness grip. So now that we have all five weapon attachments, obviously high priority on leaving, and we're right next to an L2 exit. And we're gonna go into this L2 restricted zone. And we're gonna fly in there. We have to clear the area. There are going to be some riot shields that we need to take out but it's not too difficult. And once we get through here, we just work our way through here. Every single time you open an L2 restricted area, it will create a brand new evac. So if you didn't see an evac on the map, it's not, not a worry because the moment you open that L2 door, a new evac will appear at the end of it. And you can kind of see it in the upper right hand corner in this case. And that's going to do it for this guide on how to solo all of the Heated Madness weapon attachments in a single raid. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to drop a sub for more DMZ content, and I'll catch you in the next one.